Hello and thanks for joining. Today we're going to go over how to complete the non-residential certificate of compliance and our CC form for indoor lighting. The first thing we'll need to do is locate and download our form. You can do that by going to the California Energy Commission's website, hovering your mouse over rules and regulations, and selecting building energy efficiency. You can also search Title 24 Part 6 in the keyword search bar. You'll see Building Energy Efficiency Standards Tile 24 as the first item under Program Information. And today we'll be completing these forms using the 2019 Building Energy Efficiency Standards. Buildings permitted on or after January 1, 2020 must comply with the 2019 standards. You'll see 2019 Compliance Forms. And we're looking for the non-residential compliance forms. You'll see the four form types used in Title 24 Part 6, and again today we're going to be looking for and completing the NRCC forms. One of the great features of having dynamic forms is the ability to have only one form per compliance category. So here you'll see 10 forms, one for each compliance category regulated under Title 24 Part 6, and we're going to be completing the indoor lighting form labeled LTI. We will go ahead and open that download. And when you do, you'll notice you get a warning message that says, your PDF viewer may not be able to display this type of document. Now this is because the web browser plugin for Adobe Acrobat Reader does not support dynamic forms. So we will go ahead and download that directly to our desktop with the download link that can be found in the top right hand corner of your screen and save it somewhere you will remember. When you open your downloaded dynamic form, you want to make sure to use Adobe Acrobat Reader. Always use Adobe Acrobat Reader when completing dynamic forms. Adobe Acrobat Reader is a free software that can be easily downloaded by going to adobe.com or by searching Adobe Acrobat Reader Download. Adobe Acrobat Reader is the only software that is compatible with the dynamic features of this form. If you typically use Bluebeam, CAD, Adobe Pro, or other PDF reading software to create and store your project documents, you will need to use Adobe Acrobat Reader to complete your dynamic form and then add the completed form back to your plan set in the PDF software of your choice. Later in this video, we will cover that process in detail. At this point, you may be wondering, what is a dynamic form? Dynamic forms allow the user to engage directly with the content and have the ability to react to user input in real time. These digital forms make demonstrating compliance easier by limiting information requests to only the requirements applicable to your building type and scope of work, as well as having the ability to auto-populate values based on user selection. Dynamic forms are shorter, which means less paperwork for everyone, easier to find and complete because there's only one form per compliance category, and provide more guidance on requirements applicable to your project via code section links and tooltips, which can be found by going to the top right hand corner of each table and hovering your mouse over the question mark. Now let's cover the basic structure of the indoor lighting form. The documentation author will indicate general information in table A such as climate zone, occupancy type, and condition floor area. These inputs are important because the dynamic form will limit information requests based on user selections. The documentation author will then input their project scope in table B. This table is important because it decides which tables to trigger throughout the form. For example, if our project is installing a new indoor lighting system in both conditioned and unconditioned space, we would select new lighting system in table B as well as input our calculation method and square footage for both conditioned and unconditioned space. As a result, table F, lighting fixture schedule, table H, lighting controls, and table I, lighting power allowance, would expand. If we go ahead and complete table F to indicate our lighting schedule, complete table H to indicate our lighting controls, and complete table I to indicate the space that the proposed lighting serves. When we head back to table C, you'll notice that the area category column for condition and unconditioned space has expanded. In the conditioned row, the total adjusted lighting power is less than the total allowed, so the compliance row indicates complies. 
However, in the unconditioned row, the total adjusted is greater than the total allowed, so the compliance results indicates does not comply. This is another great feature of the dynamic forms, which is the ability to indicate compliance at the compliance method level as well as at the project level. After redesigning our indoor lighting, we would head back to table F and make revisions so that it matches our proposed design. As a result, compliance at the project level for both conditioned and unconditioned indicates complies. Another great feature of the dynamic forms is the ability to indicate which NRCI or Certificate of Installation, NRCA or Certificate of Acceptance, as well as NRCV or Certificate of Verification is required based on your building type and scope of work. There are no NRCV forms for indoor lighting. For example, the NRCI LTI-02E is required when energy management and control systems have been installed. So if we select EMCS in Table H Lighting Controls, the NRCI LTI-02E moves to Yes. Before you add your compliance form to your plan set in order to submit to the local building department, you will want to confirm a few things. One, make sure Table C indicates complies at the project level. Two, make sure your project name and address have been added to the form and are accurate. Three, you will need to sign as the documentation author and also get the responsible designer to sign off. The LTI does not have the digital ID feature like some of the other dynamic forms do. This is because the LTI has the ability to add duplicate signature pages for cases where there are multiple responsible designers. This added feature eliminates the ability to use digital ID. To sign the LTI, you will either need to print, sign, and scan to your computer, or you can print to PDF, which will create a static version of the form allowing signature images to be used. To do that, you will first want to save a copy of your completed form as printing to PDF will create a static version that will no longer be editable. Then you will go to File, Print, and select Microsoft Print to PDF. Then you can click Print to save a copy of your static form. When you have your static form open, you can paste an image of your signature onto the PDF. Once you have completed those checks, you are ready to add this form to your plan set. If you typically use Adobe Acrobat Reader to create and store your project documents, your workflow does not change. If you use Bluebeam or another PDF reading software, you will need to follow the print to PDF process and add the static version to your plan set. Saving the completed file in Adobe Acrobat Reader is very important. Without this file, you will not be able to go back and make edits to the form as the static version you have added to your plan set will no longer be editable. Thanks for joining our short video. If you need information on one of the other nine Certificate of Compliance forms, look for your form in our non-residential Certificate of Compliance introduction video series. For more in-depth information on the 2019 Dynamic Forms, you can check out the Energy Code ACE Decoding Talk on the 2019 non-residential Dynamic Forms as well as the great handout associated with that decoding talk. Energy Code ACE also offers a Code and Coffee video series where we take you through a specific project scenario using an example plan set and complete the form as if we were submitting to the local building department for a real project. You can find these resources on energycodeace.com or the Energy Code ACE YouTube page.